Today, we're going to talk about money and energy consciousness. Janet Schmidt, the creator and founder of Reprogram for Success and Quantum Consciousness Integration, has discovered that by using four techniques, you can change your belief system and reprogram yourself for the success you desire in any area of your life. Her program was born after she lost a small fortune and realizing that her thoughts and emotions of losing money could be explained by an epigenetic ancestral imprinting. Janet has come from eight generation, uh, generations of ministers who signed up to be economically challenged and gave their last cent to the undeserved and had no money to manage. Once she understood this, she reprogrammed and instilled a new belief. And today, she can happily report that large sums of money flow to her easily and quickly on a continual basis that she gets to keep, enjoy, and share. Uh, Janet, let's go right into that, uh, that chapter in your life that changed everything. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Um, well, I had uh, gone into mainstream. I went to college like everybody does. I got married. I had three children. And um, at the time this happened, I was chairman of the board of a nonprofit that helped homeless women get a better education. And I was helping an inner city hospital raise funds so they could service the underserved. Um, and during that time, I ended up getting a divorce and received quite a bit of money. And I was excited because now I could help <clears throat> the underserved, both nonprofit and, you know, both organization and individual. And of course I had a financial advisor and I want to say this, he was with an internationally well-known firm that's still out there today. And he made a, he made an investment outside the scope of the firm. And with that, I lost a lot of money. Um, and I found myself in arbitration. Now, anybody who knows statistics of arbitration knows that you don't always get, most of the time, you're not going to get what you lost. So I knew the statistics. So I'm thinking I'm going to lose this money. I never once thought I wasn't going to win, but I kept thinking I'm going to lose this money. And sure enough, in the end, um, the financial advisor was disbarred, his partner fined, and the company fined, but I only got 10% of what I lost. So instead of looking at or feeling the victim, constantly living the victim, I decided, what was it about me that put me in front of this financial advisor? What was it about who I was? And why did why were certain things constantly happening to me with money or even just relationships? And so I, I started studying, I already knew quantum physics, you know, the, you know, Einstein said, match the frequency of the reality you wish for, and you can't help but bring it to you. That's not philosophy, that's physics. Um, and so I knew the power of, uh, or the energy there. But when you're caught up in the moment, it's hard to stop it. But I knew it had to be more. And so I started studying what's called epigenetics. So epigenetics for those who don't know, and I'm going to explain it in layman's terms, is the imprinting in our genes or in our parents that came down from their parents, so the ancestral, and then it gets passed to us from the time we're born to, I, I think it's passed even when we're in the womb, um, to about uh, seven years old, because we're in theta state, we don't question anything our parents say. I mean, even if we hear something at school and we come home and the parent says, no, it's this, we believe our parent. And then after that, it's society and anything catastrophic that happens to us that is going to condition us for what our reality will be. So I had to look at my ancestors and what was it? Well, coming from eight generations of ministers and, and having them give their last sense to the underserved and not really having money to manage um, and it, it went further than that, that money was seen as the root of all evil, that people who had money weren't nice people, and that if you had five bucks in your pocket, you were wealthy. So it was, or, or if you were just br barely breaking it, you were wealthy. 
Um, and so these were things that I was conditioned to hear. Um, and we, and I don't want to take away from my ancestors because I know they all worked hard. My grandfather or my great, great grandfather came to the United States and he, he was a missionary. So I don't want to take away from them, but it wasn't my journey. It wasn't what I was choosing. And so I had to understand the belief system, the emotions, the thoughts that were subconsciously embedded in my body. Yeah, let's get back to that that point because I think that is deeply embedded in so many people. Uh, this uh, belief system that money is the root of all evil. I know that from my own family, coming from a, a, a Lutheran uh, family, that uh, uh, this is deeply ingrained. But um, the mindset I think should be different. That with your abundance, with your wealth, you can do so much. You can change the world with abundance. Uh, why, why, why do we have this disconnect? Well, I want people to uh, remember this. <clears throat> In the Bible, it says, "To much is given, much is expected." But it also says, "To much, much more is given, much, much more is expected." And I'd say this to anybody, I'll, I'll belly up to much, much more any day and give much, much more. I'm willing to do that. Um, I, we, because, because like I said, we are in theta state. Now we can turn, we can decide to turn on that gene or off that gene. Normally it's off, but we're so conditioned. I mean, think about it. Like when we, when we talk about, when they talk about affirmations, changing your life, they mainly say, you have to say this for 21 days, right? Or they say 30 days. And that's because it's repeating it and it's getting in, in your subconscious. Because usually when you repeat something, a, a new habit for 21 days, then it's it gets locked in, in your subconscious being. And so all of these things, everything in our life, we're programmed. So I, I say to everybody, if there's something you don't like, start looking at the program that's running and ask, is it mine? Is it my parents? Where did it come from? Yeah, it's I, such an it, important question. Where did it come from? I know of one study of uh, the uh, great grandchildren of Holocaust victims still uh, having dreams about uh, uh, images and the, the trauma in, in the concentration camps which just goes to show what uh, epigenetics really means, that uh, some type of consciousness is deeply embedded in our ancestral line. Well, consciousness, if you, we really look at consciousness, it is the quantum field. And so right now you and I are in each other's quantum field. We're discussing, we're exchanging energy and everything. But our ancestral line is part of our DNA. And that DNA is coded and that DNA has that vibration. Or if we want to go back into looking at the mitochondria and all of that, it's, it's, it's kind of a holographic field. And so it does have that imprint in it. And so the only way that you're going to remove that is by changing the belief in your DNA or in your gene or in your belief system, which is in all of your cells. Yeah. I, I take it, I take it more that it's all of our cells that believe, you know, that money is the root of all evil. If that's what we believe, that's in all of your cells. That's yeah. just not in one part. It's 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 there. But it can be, I mean, the good news for everyone is we can reprogram ourselves. We can go through the process. It can be painful, though. It was a little painful for me to like go down the rabbit hole and look at um, where all of these beliefs came from. And I, I need to go back a little bit and say, hey, just know that even though this came was passed down from your parents, you know, your parents got it passed down to them, too. So I never blame I don't blame my parents. They were they were programmed this way. So the minute we can understand that all of us are programmed we can have a greater understanding for humanity and a greater understanding of how to have the strategy to even move through life with a flow. So I, I want to say that for everybody to think about, but, but it's, it's, it's in our genes, but you can, you can reprogram it and it's, it's a process. But like I said, you have to be able to be a student of your life and ask yeah. these. 
difficult question. Of, of course, when you're programmed, you you are in in victim mode and in the blame mode, whereas uh, when you uh, create or co-create, you in a, a creative evolutionary mindset. Yes, it's it. That's a good point. It's it's a very hard it's very hard to manifest or excel when we're in victim mode, because the understand that also vibration our our bodies vibrate at different rates that that our vibrate our thoughts have it's been proven have a vibrational level it's just like having the word hate has a different vibration a low vibration compared to love well our thoughts have these same vibrational levels and if we're coming from victim we're at a very low vibration so how can you bring anything abundant to you when you're at a low vibration it's it's virtually almost impossible now, what advice would you give uh, to people who um, have a sudden uh, meltdown financially or uh, like in your case, at the same time, you've gone through a divorce or uh, having to uh, move to a different location, having to completely change their life? Uh, I know that many uh, sectors in the economy are are going through a meltdown and people are having to change their lives completely. Some people are making it and many, many others aren't. Right. Well, some one of the things I always say when something happens to me that looks not so great, I'll always say, wait, everything's working out to my advantage. I literally flip my mind because if we go down the rabbit hole and say, this is horrible, this is horrible, this is horrible, this is horrible, you only bring more horribleness to you. I know this sounds... Um, you know, when you're in the depth, it that's hard. But if you look at anybody who's been in those depths and pulled themselves out, it's because they believe that everything's working to their advantage. They believe that this is only a setback is a set up, as they as they say, to quote a phrase. Um, but it is it is true. And sometimes we just have to go into the flow of things and say, okay, well, this is where I am now. What else? do I really want to do? And I've known people who've had really high level corporate jobs. And now they're just in, they're in the service industry working at, you know, a, a store or something at, or working at daycare or whatever they're choosing. That's not used to their corporate job that they used to have. And they're happier. They're happier at this level. So you have to, you have to follow the flow and yet at the same point, and I know this is, um, for some people, this might be hard for them to understand. At the same point go, you know, I, I understand everything's working out to my advantage. And maybe in the end, that corporate job wasn't going to be the best for you, or maybe the other job wasn't going to be the best for you, and you're going to flourish in another way. And But if we think, if we take ourselves down the thought of, poor me, poor me, woes me, woes me. We don't manifest anything from that. We don't get anything from that except for we go into that feeling and it can become a victim and ad an addictive, and I'm going to say that, an addictive feeling. Yeah. I, I, I know this, I've been in that feeling and it can be addictive, but the minute you start pulling yourself out of out of it and and start saying, you know, everything's working to my advantage, something like that, you're going to start seeing bit by bit and notice. And I would also say this to people, notice the good things that happen during the day. Even if something's tragic happened to you, notice the good thing. One tiny thing, if somebody smiled at you, notice that, have gratitude. I know all of this sounds to some people superficial, but on the consciousness level and, and, we are conscious beings. We have to understand that our consciousness is everything. And so taking care of your, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and your beliefs are imperative when you're reprogramming yourself. Yeah. Just take us into your, your four techniques for reprogramming. Well, I always say this, it depends if you're, if you're a meditator, I use a couple different methods, but usually I go, I use parts of NLP, near linguistic programming. Now that is for people who aren't familiar, 
Neuro's the brain. Linguistics is our language. Okay. And so it's the program of our brain and our language. Now understand that this too, that 93% of what you communicate is nonverbal. And that's shocking. But as we're talking now, we both can communicate with the inflection in our voices, how our head goes, even the direction of your eyes would tell me a lot. And so people need to understand that. But there are what I use in your linguistic programming in every single session is the timeline. And I would ask, ask actually all the listeners right now, just close your eyes for a minute and think of something that happened to you, you know, maybe a couple of years ago and feel what side of, what side of you that went on? Did, did it fall on the left side of you? Did it fall on the right side of you? Did it fall behind you? It tells you where your timeline is in your life. All right. And so what I do is I take people. So if it's fear, we'll use fear as one, because that was a huge one I had to overcome. Um, my mom was fearful of 99% of everything that was never going to happen. So I needed to get release that in order for me to be able to accept abundance. Um, and so, um, and so I, you go to the place where it first starts in the timeline. So if it started for me at two years old or three years old, I go to that spot and then you basically release it, you remove it, um, you delete it, and then you replace it with, um, uh, you know, safety, security, and confidence. You just flow that in and you even bring it to the future. And then I, if somebody's had trauma, I'll take them through EMI or EMDR. And what that does is it crosses your left hemisphere with your right hemisphere and brings you into the whole brain state on healing. It's called the silent healer. It is a process that that literally does this by by certain techniques that that are in EMI. And it really, it can take somebody from feeling at a 10 to all the way down to a two. So just to and explain this, this is a sinking your, your left and your right uh, half of your brain into a whole brain. Yes. It's, it's bringing your, um, it's bringing your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere into an agreement on how to heal. See, the reason why a lot of people have a hard time healing from trauma is because our left side of our brain, the left hemisphere, is our logical side. And the right side is our creative. And they go, we know how to heal you. We know how to heal you. And they're never combined in an agreement on how to heal. And so and so EMI or EMDR, if you're listening, those are two really good techniques in helping you heal from trauma. Um, and so I'll use that. Uh, with uh, neurolinguistic programming, there is a little part of self-hypnosis in it. Theta healing is also self-hypnosis where I, I, we both work together and I go in your quantum field and that takes uh, a client into a theta state and we go down the timeline. Then I go through what's called a light code activation, which it recodes your DNA and we go through that. And the last technique, which is one that I really love, and there's very few teachers out there, I think there's 35 in the whole world, is called Psyche. And it's been around for 35 years. I think they had their 35th anniversary. But the creator, Rob Williams, wants to keep it so pure. And that's why it's so strict on how it's taught. I'm an advanced facilitator, which means I can do it over the internet. But what it does is it takes the old belief and totally deletes it out by replacing it with a new belief. So if it's safety, security, and confidence, if it was fear, I say, I have safety, security, and confidence in every situation. So that's my new belief. And through, um, through dealing with your subconscious mind, we're able to cross your left cortex. I wish I could show it on on the video, but I can't, but uh, you cross the left cortex or, or the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere into the whole brain state. So in this technique, just like EMDR and EMI, you do get the whole brain state and you put this new belief system in 
your subconscious mind and it's in, it, it, it can be in within 15 minutes. I've had clients whose voice has have changed an octave when they've had it put in. And so um, I always use that at the end of the session. A lot of people think that just using NLP or theta healing or these other techniques um, and they're wonderful techniques, but I like to really double lock down what, what your new belief is going to be with Psyche. So that's why I use it at the end of every single session yeah. because it's pretty powerful. And if, if anybody's read um, Dr. Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, which was written about 20 years ago, bestseller, in the back of that book, he writes that Psyche is the fastest, most efficient way that you can change a self-limiting belief into a self-enhancing one. And that's why he was able to finish writing the book and why he has great relationships today. And, and this is a modality that they uh, call emotional psychology technique. So yeah. it's, it's very powerful. Quite amazing. And it's what a lot of the uh, spiritual teachers uh, teach us that uh, we can only find a, a solution to our personal problems from a relaxed, deep state of mind which is why they teach meditation and breathing techniques. Yes, I, and I'm glad you brought that up. If, if somebody wants to do just one thing during the day that will help you immensely, that is to met, quiet yourself for just 10 minutes. Just set a timer and just let the thoughts go through your head. It's, it's okay to let thoughts just pass through your head, but just sit there quietly for just 10 minutes. It, it's it's a reset and you'll get you'll you'll get to the point where you notice that there's actually sound in the silence that sound actually has it's silence actually has a sound it's it's quite interesting to find that out but but it, it's really relaxing for you I also believe that there are ways like the samurais used to use kind of an I call it an emotional resilience tool where they used to take all the thoughts that were all and the emotions that were in their heads prior to battle. And they would bring them all, flush them all down to right below their navel, which is called the Hara point. And then from there, they'd flush it down their legs to the ground, to the center of the earth. And the reason why they used that technique was because they understood that if they kept all these emotions and thoughts in their head, that they would be out of balance and they would be easier to knock off their horse. And so this is something that I would say to everybody, just quiet yourself, take all those emotions and just feel them flush down. Just take that 90 seconds because it's 90 seconds to feel them all flush down and go to your feet and into the earth. And I know this sounds crazy, but if you start doing it, even if you're not meditating and you just do this, you're going to find that you're more centered and you have a clear uh, thought process to start out with. Yeah. Yeah, what that's a really amazing technique. Uh, now, just uh, to get back to um, your chapter in life, you're in a very different point now. Uh, you managed to make that transition. What is your definition of abundance and a, a money consciousness mindset? Well, the first thing about money is money's energy. Money is divine energy. And if we just understood, and if we also understood that there is no limit. It's limitless. It's out there. I had somebody on, on a trip recently say to me, but there's a limit. There's only a certain amount of money in the whole world for everybody. I said, no, money is actually energy and prosperity is energy. And I'd say this about uh, when we talk about money, prosperity, if somebody gave me their um, beach home for a week, is that not prosperity? Does that not have a value to it? And so sometimes we get caught up in the money part of it and don't see prosperity as a whole. That prosperity, if somebody gave me a car, that's prosperity. They gave me the car. Um, so we can put value. It depends on where you put the value. So if we're only putting the value in money, then that's all you're going to get. But I, I like to look at the whole picture of of money and prosperity are all one because that's also brings in your health that brings in your love life that brings in everything 
So I want to say that first and foremost, but my definition for everybody is when you're happy, when you're happy with, with uh, how you're living your life, when you're happy with your relationships and you're happy with, with every aspect of your life, boy, that's ultimate success. Um, and I also found out that through everything that I do, that it is seriously bringing our brain into a whole brain state. So just even thinking about your brain up here, if we think about our brain and think about what we desire and bringing our heart up to our brain, we literally have three sides. We have the left side, the right side, and then we have our heart and our heart brings the emotion into it. And you can't manifest without emotion and you can't achieve what you desire without having the feeling of already having it. I mean, what they say is true, but you also have, a, have to have a clear thought process on it. And then you have to let it go and feel like you're already living it. Um, I, I look at every day as gratitude for the way I'm living. And even when I wasn't where I wanted to be, I still was grateful for the things that came my way. So I would say to me, that success is when you have gratitude for everything that you have, you have gratitude for, for where you're headed. Cause if we're in consciousness, we want to continue to expand in consciousness, which is also pro part of prosperity. And, um, and so it's not just thinking only about the divine money. Although I, I want people to think of money as divine energy, but everything's energy, prosperity's energy. We are energy. And when you can elevate your energy and just have great, be grateful for everything, then you've achieved the success that you've de desired in this lifetime. Yeah. But I truly believe that um, for me, I'm on my quest for cosmic consciousness. So I'm continuously on that path, which makes me feel great. So that, so when you ask me, that's, that makes me really happy to know that I'm on on this wonderful quest. That's indeed the the higher vibrational field. I know uh, some people who've uh, put a lot of energy in accumulating wealth, and then once they had that wealth, uh, most of their thoughts were uh, revolving around uh, the possibility of losing that wealth again. <laughs> and in fact, some have. Um, that, because they haven't transmuted those uh, those fears that they had initially. Well, this is this is true, and 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 um, even even if we look at how I lost the money, um, I was a programmed my vibrational hold. If we go into consciousness, my consciousness wasn't able to hold that money because it wasn't trained to hold that money. It didn't have the mindset. I didn't have that money mindset. And it is a mindset, a prosperity mindset. I didn't, that didn't exist for me. I have, or I am a prosperous person. I am, I have a money mindset. You can even say I am a money magnet, you know, you, or I am a prosperous magnet. Um, these are, these are the thoughts that need to go through your mind. Whereas we've been tra trained with the other thoughts and, and it was really retraining so much of what uh, reprogramming is really retraining your subconscious mind. Yes. And I think such an important aspect, which also explains why so many lottery winners end up losing everything sometimes after only a few months. Yeah, I, I actually have, um, I've had quite a few um, entrepreneurs and CEOs that come to me. I had one um, not too long ago say, all my relationships are fantastic, but my three businesses, I they're not going anywhere anymore. And she had hit what I call a, a ceiling, a prosperous ceiling. So, so she needed to open up the ceiling of where she was going to go and know that it's limitless. It can go wherever you want to go. And that's my message to everyone is that really we limit ourselves. We say, nope, I can only have this. I can only have that. And if you just started just even saying, I'm a, I am a magnet for prosperity and just open the, start opening the door for that. Um, because we shut the doors on ourselves so much. Anyway, after I had worked with her, for a couple of times, we uh, removed 
her belief system in that. And I hadn't heard from her in a month. And I said, what's happening? Because I keep a metrics on my clients. And she said, oh, I've had the most prosperous month ever. So it was very, very fun, fun to see that. Um, I've also worked with clients and their animals, believe it or not, removing, helping them uh, both uh, remove trauma, dissipate trauma. Um, I don't believe, I believe that we will always have the um, memory of it, but we, we can desensitize the feeling of it. Yeah. Uh, I just so want to touch on another point. We, we, uh, just for our listeners, we discussed this just before uh, the start of the show, uh, the uh, prospects uh, for 2024. Uh, a lot of people, uh, of course, are still in fear, uh, despite the economy picking up in uh, several countries, there's a lot of fear still around that uh, we're heading for something like a meltdown or like a like an e economic depression. There's still a lot of that out there. Uh, what what advice would you would you give to people to confront those fears? Stop watching the news. <laughs> I would say to you, stop watching the news. Um, you, I, I, I encourage my clients to read the headlines, you know, just so you know a little bit what's going on, but stop watching the, the news. Um, because I'm going to say this it's news in every country is controlled. Um, so just as there's tragic things happening out in the world, there's also probably twice as much good things happening out in the world. So I'm just going to let you know that. Um, but I would say to elevate your consciousness. I'd say to let go of the fear. And I know this is really hard, but once we let go of the fear, it's like we let the shackles off. And so um, I I would be more than happy to help people right now. Um, and I would say to everybody um, that if you go down your timeline, see where that fear first showed up and just delete it and say that you have safety, security, and confidence in every situation. It was the biggest, more than the money, more than what happened to me with the money, when I made that adjustment to go into safety, security, and confidence and understand that I am, I am safety, security, and confidence in every situation, it catapulted me. It, it released all of this uh, dogma or this, it's almost like a karmic thing that was attached to me. And when I did that, wow, I, I, I could start to flow much easier. And so I'd say, take a look at your fear and just let it go and, and start saying that I have safety, security, and confidence in every situation. Now, when, when you see a dark alley, you're going to know, ah, I'm not going down that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having looking at what's happening in the world and taking yourself down a place that you don't even have to go to. Um, and I will say this, the higher your consciousness is, the less you, the, the higher your vibration is, the less you're going to be affected by what's going on out in the world. And that's the truth. And, and you will start attracting other people that are like-minded that way. I think that's such an important uh, closing message for everyone how can uh, people uh, connect with you? Oh, you can uh, go on janetelaneschmidt.com. You can connect to me there. Or you can even go and and uh, I'll do this. You can go to uh, ASST at janetelaneschmidt.com and you can email me directly. Okay. We'll uh, post that in the tags below. And thank you so much for sharing your, your wisdom with us today. And uh, I want to acknowledge you for, for sharing your, your great story. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.